this complaint council has already unanimously decided that they will conduct a fact-finding study on the events that have taken place during the period 9th of June to the 2nd of July with a view to find out the facts and sort of provide the, the true situation to members of the public. They are appealing for members of the public, the policemen and the journalists to provide information to this fact-finding study. And I'm very grateful that IPCC has taken on my views or wishes that they will try to finish this uh, independent study report within six months, submit the report with recommendations to myself and make the report open so that everyone will know what has happened during that period. I fully understand that the responses of the government may not have fully met the wishes of the people, especially the protesters who have gone on the streets several times to express their views. I just want to reiterate that this is, not, this is nothing to do with my own pride or arrogance. This is the government's full deliberations of the various concerns and factors and comes to the conclusion that the responses are what are practical measures for us to move ahead. So my sincere uh, plea is please give us an opportunity, the time, the room for us to take Hong Kong out of the current impasse and try to improve the current situation. The government has the most important duty to improve the situation. So on the 1st of July, I announced in my speech that we will adopt a new governance style in order to ensure that we are able and capable of listening to views from different sectors before we implement policies. So I want to make some concrete follow-up to those uh, suggestions. One is we will listen more extensively to people from different backgrounds with different ideas so that we have a better grasp of public opinion. This work will be carried out not only by myself, it's also to be carried out by my political team, including um, the uh, principal officials, the undersecretaries, the political assistants, and also by my senior civil servants, whom I have met over the last few weeks. And they are all very willing to help by displaying that same sincerity to consult and listen. As for the role of the Executive Council in this particular aspect, I will enhance the role of the Executive Council, that is, members of the non-official members of the Executive Council, so that they also shoulder an important responsibility in engaging public opinions and reflecting those opinions to me. The second concrete measure is we will reform the existing consultative machinery which basically comprises a large number of consultative advisory committees with members appointed by the government into these committees to offer us advice. I feel that we need to be more innovative. In other words, sometimes we may not need a formal committee. We should use more open platforms to facilitate dialogues in a very frank and exchange manner and to make sure that whoever joins the committees or these dialogues come from different backgrounds, so they are not homogeneous of one group. They should come from a more diverse background, so that we can really receive views from a wider spectrum of society. One of the important committees that will undergo, uh, I would say, a, a major is the Youth Development Commission, because this commission was set up to coordinate... 看看這個記招打個感覺就是林鄭是否誤會了一些難聽的說話說多幾次香港市民就會覺得沒有那麼難受就等於撤回的而且隨著立法會會期的結束法案是需要重新在立法會那裡首讀才可以再次立法
。但系我哋更加会问一个。